ladies and gentlemen, Tesla stock is back. Back under investigation yet again today. Elon Musk and Tesla just cannot catch a break. I will share with you the latest details of this new investigation here in this video, as well as all of your other Tesla stock breaking news and what's going on in our markets today. The NHTSA said today it was opening an investigation into 2.4 million Tesla vehicles with the automaker's FSD software after four reported collisions. This is the first step to a potential recall as said here on the summary of this Reuters article. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration preliminary evaluation is the first step before the agency could seek a recall of the vehicles if it believes they pose an unreasonable risk to safety. This comes after four reported collisions, including a 2023 fatal crash. The NHTSA said it was opening the inquiry after four reports of crashes where FSD was engaged during reduced rail roadway visibility like sun glare fog and airborne dust a pedestrian was killed in rimrock arizona in november of 2023 after being struck by a 2021 model y NHTSA said another crash under investigation involved a reported injury. The probe covers 2016 through 2024 Model S and X vehicles with the optional system as well as 2017 through 2024 Model 3s and 2020 through 2024 Model Ys and 2023 through 2024 Cybertruck. What the heck? Basically, this covers like all Teslas in North America. Now, is this ultimately going to go anywhere or affect Tesla? Probably not. If anything, there could be an over the air software update or some kind of, I, I, I guess, um, reworking of the system, but I wouldn't worry about this too much. Tesla stock is kind of reacting to this. You can see today was a good day. Netflix up over 10% on earnings. That's great. S&P's up. NASDAQ's up. A lot of stocks are up. Tesla is not. Tesla is basically flat today. So I do think this is having some impact to Tesla. But we do have other Tesla stock news to go over here in this video as well. Joe Tetmeyer says he just finished up flying at Tesla's lithium refinery plant near Corpus Christi, and there are many changes since his last update. Here are a few images from that flight. It looks like there is more construction and more activity taking place at this lithium uh, refinery, at, at, at least what is going to be a lithium refinery. And it looks like a lot of progress is actually being done on the infrastructure in this area. The Cybertruck's main X account officially posted on X Canada, eh? And as you can see, you're starting to get the first deliveries of the Cybertruck. This is the Foundation Series in Canada. And about 50 Tesla semis have been spotted at Giga Nevada today, including several that look to be freshly built. I mean, this does come after comments from DHL that say basically these... Tesla semi truck is ready to go. And it seems like there are a lot of interested customers or potential customers of the Tesla semi as soon as they can start rolling off production lines. So to see more of them is definitely good news. Hopefully they're taking this moment to really perfect the manufacturing capabilities as they work to actually build out the Tesla semi factory next to giga nevada where we're expecting more high volume production hopefully they smooth things out it's a copy and paste kind of model into this new facility it's located like half a mile away from the other factory at giga nevada so hopefully it can be a smooth transition and we can start cranking out some semi trucks and it is being reported the lights around optimus's head turn red when it needs to charge. The bot then automatically locates the nearest charging station, self-navigates to it, and uses its rear cameras to align itself. It then slightly bends its knees and backs into the charger to plug itself in. Autoblog wrote this piece about Tesla's Cybercab. It says, Tesla's futuristic take on a taxi might miss the purpose of a traditional taxi, and it's titled, Tesla's Futuristic Flop. 
when Sawyer Merritt is pointing out some clarity here that about 90% of all car rides in the US have two or fewer people. Making it a four-seater would add cost for something that would not commonly be used. Again, I'm all fine for a two-seater for the cyber cab. I think that makes sense from Tesla's standpoint. The cost is going to be, you know, cheaper to do two-seaters than four or five-seaters. And yeah, most people take an Uber with just one person, okay? Sure, some, some people are going to be left out of the cyber cab experience for a while if they have multiple people drinking at a bar or something going home. The only issue that I will have is if the Model 2 is two-seater. Then we have a bigger problem on our hands. The cyber cab, Rubble Taxi, that can be two-seater. The Model 2 cannot be. That would defeat the purpose of a cheaper Tesla because you're not opening up the total addressable market, the TAM. You're in, you're in fact just making that smaller. So I don't really care about the cyber cab, whether it's two seat, four, five seat, doesn't really matter. The Model 2 though, when we get that announcement, which we probably get an event by the end of this year, or early in, in 2025, you, we cannot have a two seater. That would be very bad news. This is also some pretty big news. Tesla is rolling out another free 30-day FSD trial to some owners in the US. The people receiving this new free trial had already received a free FSD trial this past spring. So this is another push to get people to try the latest version of FSD supervised. Tesla has officially stopped selling the Foundation Series Cybertruck in the US. Anyone in the general public can now order the $80,000 Cybertruck dual motor all-wheel drive and the $99,990 tri-motor Cyberbeast off Tesla's US website. Tesla's Europe and Middle East X account says Dutch roads are sexy because you now have 100,000 vehicles registered in the country. Indonesia plans to export nickel-based material used to make EV batteries to the US next week, its energy minister said on Friday. Bahil Lakidali, maybe I'm saying that right, said Indonesia would provide the material to Tesla. And here we can see a video of Tesla's robo-taxi backing up to the wireless charging station i'll be interested to see how fast this charging can actually take place considering the battery is you know not that big and and we'll see mercedes-benz will update most of the models in its u.s lineup for 2025 equipping larger batteries for its eqe and eqs models with improved range the manufacturer also detailed the upcoming fully electric g-class and ferrari today unveiled the f80 the successor to their la ferrari hypercar which was released nine years ago with a starting price of get this four million dollars almost 1200 horsepower and zero to 60 in 2.1 seconds. And it's also being reported that Tesla's Model Y is Turkey's fourth best selling car and top EV in September. In a look at the broader markets today, the NASDAQ is up a half of 1%, the best performing index, the S&P is up a third of 1%. These indexes are outperforming because of Netflix reporting better than expected earnings, but most metrics were in line with expectations. Even though expectations were high for Netflix, there was a fear that maybe they could miss. Maybe they would not be able to meet those higher expectations. In fact, they did, sending the stock up over 10% today, helping to really boost confidence in some of your other big tech names as well, heading into this earnings season. The Russell 2000 is the worst performing index, down a tenth of 1%, and the Dow is pretty much flat on the day today. The VIX is falling 4.66% today you can see there was quite a bit of nervousness heading into netflix's report and while the vix is still elevated it has been falling in recent weeks down to 18.22 10-year treasury yields today falling about two basis points that comes after housing permits came in lower than expected at 1.2 Four to eight million versus expectations of 1.46 million and housing starts came in at 1.354 million where the estimate was 1.35 million and this is a chart of the active residential construction 
and it's looking not so good. It's it's pretty much falling straight down. So that's really not the strongest economic data today. Now you are seeing oil is trading down about one and a half percent on some of this data. And again, the fact that there has not been any escalation in the Middle East from Israel and Iran every day that does not happen, then oil should benefit from that. Stellantis to sell and shutter a large testing facility amid cost-cutting efforts. Automaker Stellantis plans to close and sell its large vehicle proving grounds in Arizona at the end of this year. This covers about 4,000 acres between Phoenix and Las Vegas in Yucca, Arizona. Option activity for Tesla stock today is strong, coming in 41 different trades, totaling $128 million with a positive order value of 58%. Tesla's short interest off reflow falls to 2.65%, $16.28 billion sold short in Tesla currently, about 73.68 million shares. You can see today you have about 50 8,000 shares that are being covered on. We don't have any action from analysts today, but yesterday you had Gordon Johnson of GLJ Research that reiterated his sell rating and $24.86 price target. Google Trends data for the United States and worldwide continues to show an uptrend in Model Y search trend activity. Um, pretty well stabilization of the model three sitting at 31 the model y at 35 which is in an uptrend going from 32 recently now up to 35 the cyber truck falling down to 38 the model s sitting at 13 and the model x at 9 tesla continues to run about 4,000 different ads with google and total global inventories for Tesla falling a bit today for the Model 3. The Model Y as well falling about 200 units. The Model X and the Model S though are going higher by about 500 for the Model X up to about 4,000 and the Model S sitting at 2,700. Sentiment for Tesla stock today is bearish at 38. One day ago it was neutral at 48. So and people not feeling as bullish today on Tesla as they, as they did yesterday. Message volume, normal at 47. Yesterday, it was also at 47. And the participation ratio today is high at 55. CNN's Fear and Greed Index today is coming in at 73, which is almost in extreme greed territory. Yesterday, you were at 71, so you're getting a little bit more greedy today. Percent of stocks trading above their 50-day moving average is actually falling today to 68.2%, you have about 1.44% of all stocks falling below their 50-day moving average on the day today. Tesla stock, from a technical perspective, continues to do its thing, holding support yet again for the one, two, three, four, five, sixth day in a row, staying above and finding support at that 100-day moving average. The longer we do this, the better the odds are that we do break to the upside and not to the downside. Preferably, we want to get back above that 50-day moving average at about $227.40 per share. If we get above that 50-day moving average, then you can make a run into the 230s again. Now, as long as we can stay above about 210 or so at this point, you're going to be above your longer term downtrending line of resistance. That's really where we want to stay above. If we fall under it briefly, not a big deal. We are heading into the election. This is seasonally a, a bad period, you know, for markets. We really haven't seen any of that, though. That could start to come out perhaps next week. That could start to come out over the next couple of weeks. It's really hard to say. But at least right now, until something changes the narrative, Wall Street it just wants to be very bullish, you know? And it makes sense. As I read this book, uh, every, uh, Secrets Every Investor Should Know, you weren't supposed to see that. It, it, there's really nowhere else to put all of the money. We, we printed over $4 trillion during the COVID you know, pandemic as is. And there's a lot of that money that is going into markets on a passive basis. Like 80% of financial flows in our markets are done by algorithms that are basically programmed to say, what are your long-term goals and what's gonna help you get there? 
after the markets just went up over 20%, those algorithms are screaming, be invested in in markets. So until there's something to really derail that, that, that makes these algorithms or, or people running the algorithms question what could happen to markets or, or what's going to happen to the economy, that algorithm's going to keep flowing. The passive money is going to keep coming in every week and keep buying the same companies, regardless of valuation. These algorithms, these money managers, they don't care about valuations. Valuations are an afterthought. And again, how do you truly value something with an extra $4 trillion added to the money supply? And a lot of that being directed into markets. The value or a valuation is derived by someone willing to pay this price or something willing to sell at this price, right? If everyone's willing to pay more, then valuation kind of becomes an afterthought. So in a weird way at this point, valuation doesn't matter. And I think that's good for Tesla um, from that perspective, right? And I think that's kind of why Tesla's trading at almost 100 times this year's multiple. And, and for the market's perspective, I don't think valuation matters anymore. And clearly, Wall Street thinks valuation does not matter anymore with, with some on Wall Street saying 600 on the SPY by the end of this year could be well too low. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on all of this down below in the comment section. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. You guys have a safe weekend and I will see you in the next one.